Hi, everybody. Welcome back. It's Tuesday night. It's Blog Chat. And we've got almost the whole gang here. Almost. Almost? Yeah. Four. I'm hearing that feedback too, Matt, by the way. We, we got the Fantastic Four. Yeah. So we're doing our best to, to not have feedback tonight, but we apologize. There's a little bit of stuff, but whatever. So welcome. Happy holidays. We hope that you guys are well. Likewise. So, yes. <laughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> so this is a good time of the year. Um, uh, I got to say, somebody does most of the heavy lifting to put this gift guide together, and it's Chris, and we just want to thank him for that. Uh, he moves mountains to put this together. Yes, so, thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Hey, right Chris, you involved. put the E in ebooks for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes my camera goes to sleep. So there we go. Uh, so today we're going to talk about this wonderful time of year where we get to talk about fun stuff and dream about fun stuff. So uh, let's do a, an application window and share that. Oh, look at that. How's that going, guys? Look at that. So uh, this is a Chris, why don't you lead us in and tell us how people can get to the gift guide if they've never heard of our gift guide before. Yeah, sure. Well, um, you know, our most recent blog post on Saturday uh, was the gift guide. Um, we've been doing this since uh, 2016, which is the first year we were doing the blog. Um, and it's grown considerably. Um, you know, it's something that we're all, all involved in. We spend the whole year um, just kind of keeping our eye out for products that we like. Um, you know, we keep a list all year and, um, you know, and just kind of come November, we, we scour it and see, yeah, this is the stuff that we thought was really cool uh, and that, that we think that other people would like. You know, I kind of think of it like, um, you know, if you're in the parks or in the, in the night photography or just photography, th these, are the, these are the things that are kind of cool that um, you might like or if you know somebody who uh, falls in one of those categories, then um, these are good gift ideas. Uh, and they, they range all different sorts of prices and all sorts of different products and services. Uh, I think it's a pretty good... Um, a pretty good outline of, of, of the cool stuff that's out there for the people who like what we like. I, I love that we do this because I then send this to my family and that's my wish list. I circle the ones that, that I want, you know, because, and it's usually stuff, something that was one of you all suggests. Cause I'm like, Oh, cool. That's one. But Nancy totally said no, by the way, to the thousand piece puzzle. She's like, no way. She's a 500 piece puzzle person, not a thousand piece puzzle. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, likewise, I haven't found anybody to buy me the fifteen hundred dollar photographer's jacket either. Oh, you haven't yet? Yeah. Oh, let me I'll, I'll, let me let me talk to you, someone. Then. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I have like four weeks, you know, before the holidays. Uh, so there's still hope, Gabe. Exactly, exactly. I want to know every crater on the the light side of the moon. It's like <laughs> that's my goal. And I can't think of a better way than that puzzle. But uh, come on, let's open it up. I feel like a kid on Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> wow, look at that table of contents. Yeah. All right, kicking it off. All right, now we kick it off with A, Acrotech, right? Which yeah, I, I think you should talk most about this, but before you do, let me show you. I have it. I've right got it there. Right here. Look at that. In the mail just a couple of weeks ago. And um, it's it's pretty sturdy. You know, I was looking forward to getting this because I shoot with the D5, um, which is, you know, it's a pro level camera, uh, pro size camera. And um, I'm looking forward to, to really testing it out uh, on this and seeing how this, uh, you know, the, the Acrotech heads look so minimal, um, but they're really smooth and, and, and strong. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting the D5 on this. Uh, but Gabe, what do you what do you know about this head? I really haven't gotten to use it. So I, I've been. A, a, you all know I, I'm the one. I think who introduced everyone on the team to Acrotech because I just love their product from the yep. beginning. Uh, made in the U.S., uh, made in California, and just min, like you said, minimalist. The, all their ball heads weigh a pound or less, yet they carry 25 pounds, except until the GXP, and the GXP now holds. 50 pounds plus look at that cool placement of that bubble level finder it's like previously bubble level finder on on that quick release was like underneath the quick release so it's like well okay you can level and then put your camera on 
you know, but you couldn't see the bubble level with it on there. And also, I just, you got to get the one, you spend the extra $30, $40, get the one with the lever lock, not the knob lock. Um, you don't want to be a knob lock. You want to be a lever be lock. Not. That's true. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I lost a camera that way. Exactly. And that lever lock is incredibly secure. Um, it, it, it's it's dumb proof at night. And uh, yeah, so now, you know, some people can sit on this one, 50 pounds. Come on. That can hold almost a human being. <laughs> so we, we love Dave, it. Dave, would you say that people should chuck the knob lock? Exactly. Oh, you know, I, was, I was setting that up for you. Old Yankee. Ball. Old Yankee. Sports <laughs> ball. Well, you know, I got to say, oh, I was just going to say, you know, I've been using that Acrotech for years as well. And I've found even the one prior to the GPX uh, or GXP um, held my heavy cameras really, really pretty nicely. So I, I just can't even imagine how sturdy this this is going to be. I, I swear by these heads. I love them. And I think uh, Peoria Videos is asking if that's a um, a gimbal or it looks like a gimbal. And it can actually be used as, as a gimbal as well. So you can either put uh, e either on its own or for those of you who, who use like the sidekick from Wimberley, you can attach the sidekick to that and then also have that additional movement. You can flip it upside down and it makes it kind of a decent panorama uh, head. You know, you're not going to be going up or down and stuff, but you flip it upside down um, and then put the quick release on the other side. So super versatile, super well engineered and made. The, it's the only ball head you need. How about subpar parts? <laughs> yeah, who doesn't, all who doesn't love subpar parts, right? I love the, these things. The funniest thing on Instagram for so many oh. years, right? Or for well, two years now, I guess. Um, but now she, Amber Share, is is actually selling it, which good for her. You know, thank you yep. for making us laugh on Instagram. And now, not only she, I think she was doing postcards first, but now um, it's eight by ten prints and, and the larger. So if there's a park that you had a wonderful experience at, buy the subpar version and have it in your house. Hey, Chris, it looks <laughs> like she went there during the, the Clover also. Sorry? It looks like she went there during the Clover also. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but you know what I don't see is the mosquitoes. Oh, mm. they're there. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> um. Oh, so this is a, this is a book that uh, Lance came across. A, a, any of you know uh, Babak? So I, I've been following Babak on Instagram for a while, and then I was very mm -hmm. excited. And, and guys, share with us in the comments who saw Babak speak in at, at Optic. That was uh, he spoke on the main stage, and then also um, came and did a, a live Q and A. Um, he's uh, he uh, was in the Sigma room, I believe, or Sigma session. But mm -hmm. amazing photographer that is it created the, this world of night group and this is a compilation it's not his it's it's a little some of his work but it's actually more of a compilation of the best of uh his his group the world at night and uh it's a wonderful collection he works very closely with the international dark sky association and and, and promoting uh the dark skies um, and helping with those activations. So it's, a, or, or, you know, I haven't seen this book, but Lance got a copy of it. I'm a big fan of Babak. And, and yes, this was on my wish list that I sent to my family. <laughs> <laughs> it did. Not you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Hey, Exposure Man. <laughs> all right. So this is, this is uh, right. We all know how we love printing, right? And, and we like, I, I think ultimate, we like metal prints, you know, uh, I think that's the best uh, quality and, and gives a, a, a really nice uh, breath of fresh air or breath of nice gloss to night images. But metal prints can be A, a little on the pricey side, and B, heavy and big. You know, I know I, I try to cycle through. I treat my house like a gallery and cycle through different prints. And storing a metal print is a pain, you know, because you can't break it down. Enter the exposer. This has been my my go to gallery um, uh, frame and print uh, area, and I love it. I've got uh, the biggest size. I think it's like a twenty. What is it? Uh, is that's right over my couch? Is the biggest size. But then I I, I print like 16, 24, 24, 20 by twenty four 
all those sizes. Just new on this, guys, is that Exposer just came out. We've always they've always been one choice of finish, and that was the Vivid Satin. But they just came out in like the last month with a new finish called Radiant Satin, and the Radiant Satin is a, a little bit glossier. So I'm very excited. I want to test this out. Um, that'll be one of my next purchases from Bay Photo, and we've got a discount code for any of the wall displays. So that can be a uh, metal print, can be an exposer, can be uh, one of their new epic prints. And if you're really interested in that and have questions on Bay Photo, join us for our Instagram Live tomorrow because uh, I'm going to have the owner of Bay Photo, Larry, uh, Larry, a bit, a bit tall. Um, is going to be on our Instagram live and we're going to be talking all about the different finishes and different uh, products that they carry as well as promoting that NPAN 20 discount code that gets you 20% off until December 12th. Nice. Let's say um, what I like about the exposure a lot, is, you know, for years, I wanted to make a really big print for my living room. And it was just, you know, it always was going to cost more than I, I wanted, it, you know, that I wanted to spend on it. Then when the exposer came out, I, I saw, you know, I was able to make a four by six foot print for my living room at a, at a reasonable cost. And, um, you know, so I ended up getting one in my bedroom too. It just looks amazing. Yeah. I just love to blow up the work that much. Um, yeah. Really, you know, you get a good photo. I'll, vouch, really shine. I'll vouch for those prints at, at, at Chris's house. They look fantastic that large and just epic and and also lightweight and right, you're not, you know, who wants to store a print like that? If you got to move, trans so the exposers, you just Ooh. roll, you roll up, at, you know, and you can you can buy just exchange prints and swap out images. Brilliant idea. Let us know in the comments if you guys have tried out the exposers. Yeah. Mm, thank you. Oh yeah. You know, I actually um, uh, this being a gift guide, I actually just purchased uh my third ben q um for sandra so yeah <laughs> that, that was the christmas gift and it and it, it and it came in a box and it wasn't gift wrapped oddly enough and there it was when i walked out and her she had pulled it in so she has got this but i'll tell you this is when i started using these monitors I used to work with an apple monitor and i was surprised to see how much more amazing <clears throat> Um, these monitors were and how much better they um, actually could be calibrated. Um, and you guys know, I mean, these things have really, the price on these is so competitive. You just yeah. don't feel like when you spend five or 600 bucks, you're going to get a super high end monitor, which is exactly what you're doing, you know? And um, so when we first started working with these guys, I was just super excited about it. And um, yeah, then I'm staring at two of them right now, side by side, you know, um, it's the way to go. It's yeah, it's the yeah, it's my monitor of choice. And you guys all use these as well, right? I think we all have this one, the 2700 yeah. if and, and maybe others have different versions, but this was <laughs> this is a great a great one. Yeah, it's it Sandra. Really yeah. <laughs> so Sandra, consider that, you know what I'd say that's an advent gift, right? First day of December. Advent, advent yeah, gift. That's right. <laughs> so, you know, make sure you're still getting your Christmas gift. <laughs> or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa, whatever. <laughs> oh, too funny. Who could talk about BH gift cards? This Any is what I asked for for Christmas. So. <laughs> That's right. I mean, hello. This is the, the go to. If you're a photographer and you have friends that don't know what to get you, just be like, uh, uh, I'll take a, a BH gift card, any denomination, knowing that I think the lowest denomination I think is $25. Uh, but, you know, they can get you like five of those. <laughs> but yeah, the the, the, uh, the 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 universal gift for for any photographer, um, and you can obviously not just get photo; you can get video, you can get telescopes, binoculars, home theater, all that kind of fun stuff. So go to. I was going to say six hundred thousand opportunities to purchase. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Next, our bookshelf. Uh, yeah, our books. Um, we, we just we have one. What happened? Sorry? <laughs> we just have one book there. Just have one. Everybody borrowed the rest of them. Um, <laughs> yeah, we launched this page earlier this year. It was something that we'd been wanting to do for a while, and uh, it became one of our, our COVID quarantine projects uh, to get this done. Uh, so, yeah, so we have this this, this webpage now uh, on our site. 
Um, it just lists, you know, uh, the books that we all love. Um, you, you know, any, anything from monographs to how to to travel, you know, the photography history books in there. Um, you know, it's it's just the books that the five of us really like and that we think other people would like too. So, if you want to get somebody a book, a photography related book for Christmas, there's National Park books on there too, and things like that. Uh, take a look, and you know, we we've linked to um, you know either B and H or Amazon, whoever's selling it. So um, yeah, check check that out. We've got uh, over a hundred books on there, and we're, we're always adding more. It's dangerous. It's, it's dangerous. dangerous. When, when we did that blog and that article, I think Lance and I both like ordered five new books because we we're inspired by each other on uh, from other you know suggestions. We're like, oh boy. Well, originally at the top of that page there was a buy all button, but Nancy and Catherine asked. Me to do that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Ah, <laughs> uh, who's got the HX five R? You well, know, this is one I actually about. haven't used yet. Yeah. Uh, no, well, I, I mean, love the coat flashlights. Um, you know, Matt, what yeah. do you like about yeah. the coats in general? What's that? Me? Yeah, yeah. So, well, you know, Matt, you know, you're lighting. Oh, yeah. Um, what do yeah. you like about the, uh, the coast lights in general? Uh, the two most important things are the, the zooming head and when you're all the way out wide, the edge to edge evenness to the crisp fall off from umbra to penumbra. It's just, it's a beautiful light. Yeah. yeah. And this has, so, this has features too. Yeah. This has, sorry, the, 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 you know, and what's cool about this, what, what it's actually separates this from the rest of the ones that we usually right. like the HP5 and the H, uh, wait, the HP5 and the 7R. Yeah. Is this one, the button is on the, is sort of a little bit easier. What? To get to, so, so sometimes the back button can be a little bit, I don't know, too aggressive, or just kind of maybe if you have a small hand or whatever, it's, it can be a little tricky. Yeah. But your on-off button is a little bit easier or mm -hmm. logistically placed on, on this one. But besides that, you can put rechargeable batteries or the CR123s uh, mm -hmm. in there. Um, yeah. And this has got a nice uh, three, uh, 75, 340 lumen. So it's in the, you know, I mean, who doesn't, who, who, who here is guilty of having, Let's say, okay, people in the in the room, raise your hand. Who has who has five or more flashlights? <laughs> All right, raise your hand. I don't see anyone in the comments. Raise your hand. Who has thirty seconds seven behind? Seven I mean, listen. It, you usually get a free flashlight every workshop you attend, so all of you should have like ten plus flashlights. But uh, <laughs> but you can never have enough of these paintbrushes. You know, that's is, right. Is what we like to call them. Uh, each one will service you differently in the field or just at home, you right. know, for, for finding all of our black gear and our black bags, <laughs> you know. One for every camera bag and jacket pocket. Yes. Indeed. Yeah. Oh, oh. Well, I I got to talk about this one. I'm going to I'm gonna go solo for a second. Go solo. The, the picture that I took was because I own it. Boom. Oh. So this, this is an artist that's local to where I live who uh, makes these out of a single piece of wood. And he uses the Shushugi Ban method, which is uh, scorching the wood. It's a Japanese tradition. Uh, and then he uses different colors to create these cosmic disks, as he calls them. And he's doing some interesting things with his fiance. And they're also pressing wildflowers into it, too. So there's an interesting combinations. You can visit on his website, Constellation. Uh, it's there in our gift guide. Um, we That's fell in nice love size, with it, Matt. What, what, how big is that? Would you say? I would say uh, bigger than my head. <laughs> <laughs> bigger than my head. Dude, if, you put that, if you put that over your head, then it's like you're, you're like this surreal cyclops. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. That's good. That's good. That gives it. That gives it scale. Uh, you said over my head, right? Not in front of my face. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Derek, Derek is a genius. He does many other interesting things. This is just one of them, uh, but the link to his website, his his business constellation is there. Uh, if you, you're into this kind of wall art, check them out. I think these are gorgeous, cool. Matt. These are really, really gorgeous. And thank you for introducing us to him. And I've been in talks with him. He's sending me pictures. We're, we're working on something. But I do love the idea of that, the the pressed wildflowers and that other, that right. next level stuff. And, uh, yeah. you know, seeing Mars, seeing the moons of the sun, just all the different constellations sort of groupings he has is 
totally, you know, fits our, our bill and, 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 and just another way to interpret and to interpret the night. Yeah. He was, he was working on setting up his shop all during COVID and Mabel went in there once in a while to check in and, uh, and she saw these early on and he, this was one of the original, the one that I got here is one of the originals that he made and he nice. didn't sell it for a while. The day that he decided to sell it, we walked in. Ah. We got lucky. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. So maybe you'll get lucky and find some. They're, they're, no, yeah. no, they're never the same. They're just, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. He's channeling something when he makes them. So, well, we always count on Matt to show us some good cat skill art. <laughs> Uh, nice. So these uh, field notebooks, um, uh, something I came across earlier this year. I don't know about you guys, but I still carry a small notebook with me um, in my bag. Um, you know, I, of course, I've taken notes on this a lot. Uh, but I, there's just something about having that notebook with you, um, whether you're making notes about photos that you're doing, um, you know, which is an age-old tradition. You learn so much by just making notes about what you're doing that you can reference later when you're processing. Um, but, you know, I like to take a lot of notes about locations that I might want to go back to um, or even just ideas I have. You know, you're out at night and doing long exposures and just walking around in the dark and uh, that can be a really creative time for me. So I'll jot down notes about what I'm thinking and all that. But, you know, the, uh, these books I just thought were, were gorgeous and they're national park themed. Uh, so I thought it would be a really nice addition uh, to the guide. Uh, the kind of, we've got so many now National park lovers who come on the workshops and uh, read the blog, and uh, so I thought this is a product that people would appreciate. And uh, but correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, but isn't there an area that you can also, you know, stamp, you know, the the park inside that inner flap or something like that in these? Um, yeah, yeah. You know, if you're into the stamps, um, you know, if you. Yeah, I'm not saying I'm a stamper, but I'm just, you know, I, I'm a stamper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying a stamper, but I'm a stamper. Um, there are five stamps available at Grand Canyon. Uh, Gabe, how many do you have? I think I, I no. There's more than there's, there's there's. I thought there was more than five. You, 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 you had the five. You, you were chasing when I down there. Eh? I was on the chase, right? Because then, well, then you and I were also... working all day at the festival, and I took a lunch break. Your break was to go get your fifth stamp. Yes. <laughs> and I had to hike all the way down to the bottom and come back. <laughs> Well, Gabriel, I don't think I knew that. About, I don't think I knew that about you that you were a stamper. Huh. Well, I, I mean, I'm a stamper, but I am also someone who takes my time in the park. Hello, um, you know. <laughs> but I did. I, 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 I have seen stampers, and I give them the stink eye. Oh wait, some people might not understand. <laughs> okay, that there's that there's a, a negative connotation to the word stamper. Well, Should we the, digress for a moment and say what I, that is? Yeah, I mean the, the stamper is is someone that just is 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 in it just for the stamp, right? Not not for the national park experience, right? I was yeah. at Harper's Ferry, and that's where I've seen sort of the 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 couple that was an older couple that was they came in stamped, and then there was a stamp that wasn't available or something like that, and they kind of, they were almost like yelling at the mm -hmm. ranger because it wasn't available, and it was like I was just like guys, it's just you know it's a stamp, and then. And then they kind of just rushed out in a huff, and it was this, you know, it's someone who just goes to the park just to get that quote unquote souvenir. You know, we all love our souvenirs. We all love. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, the top souvenir we should be bringing back is our photographs, right? And in order for us to get the photographs, we've got to spend time in the park. However, it's nice to have other little memorabilia, whether it's the Unigrid or the stamp or the patch or the 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 disc for your hiking stick and stuff. I mean, there's plenty of different super, there's tons of different options uh, the, of rabbit holes you can go down. And uh, you can obviously have a conversation with National Park Patch Lady, myself, Matt, where I've gone down several of those, uh, those holes. But uh, whatever you do, or have it organized, but also don't forget to celebrate the park. Don't just get in and out. Patches. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Ah, so this is what I this is the one I requested. And but it's it's a no-go. It's a no-go. It's a thousand pieces. You know, this is uh but it's it's funny. It's at, you know, I come to Pittsburgh uh for Christmas for the last like 10 years, and every year 
Nancy's family, they, they take out this like coffee table, the tray, and they have their like puzzle area. Now this has become challenging when we bring Theo the cat home because cats love puzzles. <laughs> right? I say, here's some smirking. They love sitting on the puzzle. They don't like, they like sitting on the puzzle and then going uh, with the pieces. <laughs> exactly. However, you know, um, I thought this was a really cool puzzle. A, it's circular. B, it's the moon. Or A, it's the moon. B, it's circular. Um, but what a great way to just explore and get to know the moon um, and every little crevice and crater and crack on the light side of the moon. Though I will say that area that's all the same tonality, that would probably take a little <laughs> bit of time. <laughs> so, so drop yep. in the comments, guys. Are you a 250 piece puzzle person, a 500 piece puzzle person, a thousand piece puzzle person or more. <laughs> Me, I'm a zero puzzle piece. Person. You're a zero puzzle? Uh, yeah, I was yeah. gonna say, I didn't even know it was a thing. So I, I tell you, as a kid, when I did my puzzles, then the whole uh, then the whole thing was to then you, you'd like laminate it, right? You'd, or you'd, you'd I, what, did, what did you put something on it? I forget what it was, but I remember you put it mm -hmm. to make it permanent and then you'd hang it on the wall and that was your, you know? Cool. Ah, who doesn't have this tripod? I think Chris, you're the only one that doesn't have it, right? That's because he, he doesn't like center columns. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, Matt, who do you wants to talk about I, this? I mean, I, 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 I'll talk about it, but you know, you know, you know, to me, it's just, you know, like uh, 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 Matt always says, you know, you gotta. Oh, he's got one. He's, He's got, got stickers on it. That's it. Look at that. See, there it is. You know, uh, you know, for me, I've had, well, we all have. We've had, how many tripods have we owned in, throughout our life, right? But 15. Not, a, not yeah. as many flashlights, but almost close. Right. 15. But when it comes to like, uh, you know, when it comes to this Gitzo or my first Manfrotto tripod, I still have both of them, you know, and they're still operable and they just last forever. And you could just feel the quality you can feel the quality difference, I think, right? Yeah. Oh, Matt, I was I was looking for a little quality uh, feel there, but uh, but yeah, <laughs> oh, you know, it's amazing. Yeah. You know, it's, and you guys are you guys have been around long enough to remember, you know, maybe 15 years ago when you either had a Gitzo or you had a Manfrotto, and that was it. Everything else was kind of junk, and they've, you know, over the past 10 or 15 years, so many new tripod manufacturers have come out, just crazy. And yet, Gitzo still sits at the top, you know. Yep. Yeah, and look Agreed. how small that thing is. Yep, it's my everyday tripod, and it's that small. Yeah, it's yep. super portable. Uh, all, what, all think, yeah. larger than my head. <laughs> it is yeah. longer than your head. Yeah. I will say that it's the Gitzo, and this is the twenty-five forty-five, not the fifteen forty-five. The fifteen forty-five is even more compact, but the twenty-five forty-five gives you that better balance, a little thicker. Um, uh, legs are there, and so a little bit more stability. But this is also the lowest price that's ever been. I think it's like, uh, like I said, five ninety nine, six ninety nine, and then we have that ten percent uh, discount code that's good until uh, Friday. So that that is the lowest price that has always been. And get it without the head, folks, because you already you either already own a, a, a Acrotech head or you get the GPSS, the smaller Acrotech head. That fits Ooh. the diameter of that traveler better. GPS. GPSS is the small one. Right. But is wouldn't this one be the GPS? No, this is because it has the it has the legs come up. So if oh, it has okay. the legs that come up 180, you want the SS. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because uh, I've got the GPS on mine. And you're right, they don't quite the flatten don't... up, but the head's a little Easy. bit more, a little bit more beefy. So yeah. um, I would uh, like that. You know, yeah, there you go. There's the GPS yeah, on. I've got the leveling base on it. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So to Tim, you should request the GPSS to um, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it's it, it's yeah. I don't know Ask what to Santa. say. Get tripods. I've got I've got at least four of these of different sizes and stuff. You know, it, it's, <laughs> I love them. Yeah. Nice. So uh, uh, Matt, that's the GPS on there, right? This is the GPSS. Yep. So and it's a little bit. Yeah. 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 And so, the level. And the thing. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, whenever I travel, I take my head off, like when I'm packing it, and uh, then uh, yeah. pack it that, separately. Yep. You know, 
And and then I find that, you know, when I'm working around the backpack and stuff, I usually don't have it folded up as much. So just remember, you guys, I mean, this this 2545 is an everyday tripod. This is a heavy tripod that's super light, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, I mean, I wouldn't use something heavier than that unless I'm bringing out like a, a 500 millimeter or something like that. Yeah. Sandra got the joke. Okay, good. Sandra, you're good. All right, what's next? What's next? What's next? Oh, hello, Ranger. <laughs> hey, have, have you guys heard. been on this place? Have you guys been here? This yeah. is this is awesome. And I was to Hello you know, Ranger been, or to, yeah. to where? Oh. Yeah, the Hello Ranger. You know, I've just been clued cool. into this recently, and um, you know, we all love our communities, right? And uh, you know, I hope that we have a, or I feel we have a nice one here um, with our folks. Um, but when it comes to, you know, to straight up national parks, this is just an awesome community to become a part of. Uh, you know, you join up and um, and you could just simply ask questions about where to go, what to do. Um, and there's tons of enthusiasts like us that uh, like us for night photography that uh, that you can reach out to and and uh, get lots of information from and 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 just get some good bon ami. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, did you, did you say bon me like the Vietnamese sandwich? No, bon homme. Bon homme. <laughs> bon homie. Good friend stuff. <laughs> yeah, so download this app, folks. Just got it. Boom. Ooh, a 45. Irix. Well, Irix has been our favorite of the of our of our lenses. Um, you know, we love the 15, and then you know, we respect the 11 millimeter. <laughs> I think is a good way to say it. We, we but both of those are, are 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 really useful tools. But Matt and I tell you, Matt, you've you've inspired me. I, I you know, we've been doing night photography uh, for a long time, and I really kind of just got comfortable shooting with a fourteen twenty four and a fifteen. That's it. I, I try to keep my kit minimal. That's all they need to bring out in the field. But then you know, you hang out with Matt. He whips out a 50 millimeter. He whips out a 35 millimeter. Heck, he whips out a 70 to 200 millimeter. And you start getting jealous of all these other non-standard, you know, night photography focal lengths. And I will say, I definitely bring a 50 millimeter now a little bit more, uh, you know, just because it's, it's just nice to have that kind of almost normal look, uh, get longer star trails and et cetera. Um, and again, if you want, Irix is... We love the Irix lenses because their infinity is true. Uh, it click stops in. It's the weather sealed. They got the locking. Once you find that focus, you can also lock it. Um, and they're inexpensive. They're inexpensive manual focus lenses. Um, they also have a nice close up. You know, it's got a good throw to it as well. And this forty five, this could be a new sleeper lens for you. Just just to ex have you explore the night a little bit closer or again just a, a great normal lens for day and night use i would consider that for panos because i usually use a 35 mm -hmm. vertically to mm -hmm. sketch. that mm -hmm. 45 might be a, a sweet sweet lens for that yeah yep mm -hmm. you know what i like this focal length for uh, this is something tim and i were talking about um we did a few workshops together this fall and it's something we came across a lot that we both like this look of being able to use a lens that's close to normal with the Milky Way, because you can fill background with the Milky Way core. Um, yeah. You know, and it works really nicely. If you've got an interesting foreground and then you can just like fill that sky with the Milky Way with something around, you know, 40, 45, 50 in that range. Um, the the trick in there. with that is that, you know, if you're using a 2.8 lens, uh, you're, you're not collecting enough light to, to keep the star points, or it's gonna be a dark exposure that you're gonna have to correct for in post-production. Um, with this, I mean, this is two stops faster, and you know, and so you're getting more light to play with. To do that, you can do a star point photo with this focal length, and even stop down a stop. Um, so uh, that's what I like this lens for. Yep. Yeah. You know, plus everything else that you said about Irix lenses. Steve Barnes just comments he bought the 150 millimeter, the macro lens, which boy, that's a very cool lens as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. That is a nice lens. Super nice. Yeah. Good on you, Steve. I just, I just got that one myself and I've yet to put it through its paces. I'm hoping this winter I'm going to uh, try for some snowflakes or uh, maybe some propped up flower arrangements or something in the house once it's too cold to go out. Um, so I'm looking forward to that myself, the IRX 150. 
macro. So, and we got Ken Lee asking, I guess, uh, you know, for coma. I don't know if any of us have done the coma test on that 45. Um, is how far can you photograph the uh, open? Can you photograph on this one? Mm. I think we might have to get back to you on that one. Or let's distortion should be minimal. Yeah, but but coma. Book first. Oh yeah. Let's talk about, speaking of Ken Lee, oh <laughs> he my goodness, he's in the room. Oh whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you should um, just invite him in. No. Exactly. Exactly. Um, well, yeah. So I wish Lance was here to talk about this book. Um, we had. Yeah, Ken I've not yet seen it, and I'm super excited about I, it. I own this book. I'm a proud yeah, owner of it. it I, it's sitting right on. My, I got the uh, signed copy. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, yeah, it's we, cool. <laughs> and, uh, I love Ken's photos. I love his light painting. You know, it's really gotten, mm -hmm. gotten to the point when I, you know, I was kind of scrolling through Instagram and I know a Ken photo when I see it. Um, yeah. He's, yeah. He's got a very, He's got his very look. polished style of light painting and a very uh, particular look to his photos that I enjoy a lot. Um, I'm going I'm to so stop you for one second. Oh, sorry. No, go continue. I'm sorry. Uh, so, Gabe, what, you, you have the book too? I've got the book too, and I just, you know, it is a wonderful uh, journey through exactly as the title says, abandoned South, uh, you know, Southern California, and he's visited the, you know, junkyards and airplane, you know, abandoned airplanes and all these kind of stuff that I think we all sort of have a, a little bit of that fascination. If you're a night photography, the night photographer, then you kind of like exploring these darker regions that sort of are untouched or or been left. Uh, to to you know, kind of waste away a little bit. And Ken just does an amazing, amazing job. His his light paintings on point. His compositions are strong and and up in your face. And uh, and it's a great it's a great book. It's, it's it's a small book actually. It's a quick you know it's it's a quick read. You know I like it. It's a lot of a lot of beautiful images. You know you can get through it in you know half an, a good half an hour an hour. You know, pouring through those pictures, so it's a great one. And and the rumor is he's working on a uh, book number two uh, for next year. I think I've just decided on the gift that I'm going to give myself this Christmas. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's you can, <laughs> exactly. Well, con contact Ken. You get the signed copy. Right. You can get it off of Amazon as well. But contact Ken. You get the signed copy. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Ken. I, I want to pause for a second. Jay asked us this. We missed the, the question when we were going through. Ah, Are yes. the iron lenses available in the Z mount? Uh, only nah. if you use the adapter. Yeah, not yep. yet. Wah, not, wah. Not yet. Were, were, they were supposed to. Like, not, we've been obviously been asking that for over a year from them, and it is in the works. Um, as well as uh, you know, a, a Sony mount. I mean, they don't even have a Sony mount yet, right. uh, as well. But I think COVID really kind of put a, a hamper on it. Um, but you know, we work with it with the FTZ mounts, of course, and uh, and so that that that's that's the way to go. Yep. Uh, I I can talk about this one. I I use this uh, every day. Uh, I use a lot of Lacy products, but this is my <laughs> master drive, and I have a, a twenty terabyte, and I have it uh, set to RAID mirror, so that I have. 10 terabytes and 10 terabytes. Um, and it's uh, it's what I depend on. I have my, let's see, rugged drive that I go out shooting with, and I come back and I open up my master Lightroom collection on this drive and import everything into this so that I have it in two places. Um, it has some handy ports on the front, including a USB 3 um, and a SD and another memory card slot there. So uh, if you're... If you're wondering if you if you need something that has a, a lot of space and you can swap the drives out yourself, which you just flip down the front panels, then this is a really great option. And it looks like we have a 10% coupon for this also through December 4th. So get on that. <laughs> it's BHN Pan. Uh, if you guys are watching it right now and you're curious about it, uh, that would be a good coupon code to try out. There's Gabe with it live. Gabe? <laughs> Showing it. You know, nice. also... You know what else, so Matt? I have the the same one except mine's an eight terabyte. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so it's mirrored. So I have two eights. And nice. um, the I was astounded when I was moving all the initial information over there because it was USB C to USB C. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was like, 
Oh yeah, this is super fast. Yep. Super yep. fast. Yeah. The fastest there is right now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So the silver ones are are, are are Thunderbolt three. And then if you are uh, PC only, then they have their their black versions of this. They just came out with earlier this year. And the black versions are just you, you you'll pay a little bit less because it'll will have won't have a Thunderbolt port, but it does have two USB C ports. So uh, depending on what you are on, on what you are Mac or PC, get the appropriate color and save yourself ten percent until Friday. Nice. Ah, oh, this is one that I haven't had a chance to try out yet, uh, but I'm really curious about it. It reminds me of a lot of the tube lights that are out these days, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. except that it's got a nice long strip of diffused light, and you just use the flashlights as you have to power mm. it. Simple. So it doesn't need batteries. You already have them in your flashlight. Yeah. Um, and chances are, if you've been doing this for a while, you already have a universal connector. So you just get this, uh, and it looks like we we have a nice twenty percent discount on that too. Uh, and it's already very affordable because it's it's plastic, you know. You know, it's, it doesn't have any batteries or electronics. Why would you, Matt, use a tube light as opposed to, uh, like, a, uh, let's say a Luxley light? You know, a square, a, a rectangular light. What 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 to you? as a light painting artist or night portrait artist is the benefit of a tube light. Well, I don't have it here, but I'm going to demonstrate with something similar. Like if, if you have something that has an array like this, it's mm -hmm. a whole bunch of different lights that create cast shadows, right? That each light causes different shadows. Even if you diffuse said light, you know, you still have something that's this shape, right? Mm -hmm. A tube light, you can turn into a window pane just by dragging it. So you can create a soft box by dragging a long, diffuse cool. light. Cool. So you can create that window light look by moving the light to create a larger, soft, diffused source. That's it. Like it. Yep. So that one, I'd suggest getting on that. And let's let's see the results out there. Post your results. <gasps> we're in the light, we're in the lighting section. <laughs> who, who here saw the optic uh, talk for National Parks at Night, where we we talked about our light painting and then had the Lexley Fiddle announcement break out? That was cool, huh? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, Tim, I'm... how many of the how many of the fiddles do you have now? Three, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> you mean, how, how many do I have coming, or how many do yeah, I have? Exactly. Yeah. Right. He, he was like first, first, first in line to order. Yeah. Um, two, I've got two. Okay. And yeah, and I'm, and I'm super psyched about it. It's, it's got such a good feel to it. You know, it's, it's, um, it just feels like such high quality. And, uh, of course I've already been playing with it. I don't have any photos to, to show yet. Um, but I've been putting it, uh, kind of through its paces and, um, I'm super excited. Um, I think this is going to be a perfect complement to the viola. Yep. Yep. You know, I really yep. do. I think it's going to be just, as a matter of fact, I, um, <clears throat> what I did is, oh, I wish I had, oh, maybe I do have it handy. I've actually just created a new uh, carrying case for my two violas and my two passports so that oh, they are cool, all cool. ready to go. Um, yep. And uh, yeah, and I feel like, oh, I just wanted to, I just want to get out and shoot now because I'm, I've got it all organized and I'm ready to go. Um, and uh, yeah, the passport is amazing. I can't wait to see it uh, um, go really super low, you know, to that that uh, yep. that point point zero two percent or whatever it goes to. Um, it's going to be a real nice compliment to the viola for sure. I'm super. Thanks excited. for listening to us, Luxley. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, thank you, Matt. <laughs> thank you for Matt for pushing it. <laughs> I said thanks to Luxley for listening to us. You know, yeah. like who listens to night photographers? Apparently, Luxley does. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, right, exactly. And and Jay Jeffries and Eunice, who just also recently bought uh, violas, that's it, it. Listen, those are great lights. They still are, and this is not oh, yeah. replacing the Luxley. Yeah. You know, these are two uh, complementary, as as Tim said, two complementary lights. So the Luxley, obviously, you have some swappable batteries. So that's kind of a very versatile feature to have. Um, the viola, there, mean. sorry, yes, the viola is is, is got the swappable batteries. Um, and the fiddle and, is internal, and the fiddle is internal, and the Lexi is. I think it's 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 wider, but but shorter. This is a little bit longer. I think the the viola is, is overall bigger, um, but uh, both of them are, are are cool and compact. This is just a nice a nice slick version to just if you want something super compact, um, mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about the battery kind of pushing out or you know 
I always took the battery out and put it in another sleeve. So this is obviously the simplest, smallest, easiest one to do. And uh, they're on they're on forty dollars off um, until uh, the end of the year on just the the light itself or any kits. Like I like that kit. That's the magnet kit that comes with the ball head. Um, that's a pretty cool kit because it gets just bringing that magnet with this kind of fun thing. You know, not obviously in the national park, but maybe indoors or at at you know if you're going around town and stuff like that. That'd be a kind of a cool way to uh, you know get that light elevated to different uh, you know poles and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, car hood. Mm -hmm. uh, put a Just put saying. a piece of fabric underneath it first. <laughs> remember, you look how good that would have worked in uh in uh, San Francisco. Remember when we had the viola stuck out the window on a on a on a tripod? Do you, know, do you remember that, Gabriel? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> this would have been a lot easier. <laughs> oh boy, that's crazy. Uh, no barn doors uh, for the fiddle that I know about. I mean, we'll see. Um, and honeycomb clip on for the fiddle. Uh, well, that could be a possibility. That we'll we'll get back to you on that one, Jay. Uh, that that right. That I tell you something. The diffuser is very cool on the fiddle because it's magnet. Whereas the, yep. the the diffuser on the Luxley, I'll be honest, was a little viola. Sorry, viola was a little uh, tricky. It, it was cool yeah. and and I liked how it collapsed, but it was always kind of, it took a little bit more time to put on. Whereas this yeah. one just kind of snaps on. Yep. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, I got this. It's right here. This is it. The the Nan pole. I got it. I got it because Nancy made me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> the this is I've had the uh nano stand. Uh if you've seen me at a workshop and with a light stand, I've had the nan nano stand, which is Manfrotto's smallest, most compact. It's like the traveler of the light stands. Um, and they've had that for 10 plus years. A few years ago, I think it was like three or four years ago, they came out with a nan nano pole, which was an, an aluminum version, and the center column would come out. But and then just recently, they came out with a carbon fiber version of the nano pole, which is this one. And you can see, look, that center column looks exactly like something we're all very familiar with—a tripod leg. And now I can just kind of open it up, just like this, right? And simple and easy, one touch, get it, get it really open and smooth, and, um, and and you know, otherwise a light stand you just like unclick, unclick, unclick. You know, it's a sort mm -hmm. of a, it's a little bit you know trickier and time consuming. You pop this button right there, and boom, and you've got yourself a uh, you know, a nice little boom arm as well. And if you've also been recently with Lance on a um, on a workshop, he he doesn't carry a light stand. He doesn't he has an extra tripod, but he carries a boom arm. And I was starting to get a little boom arm and boom arm envious of you know with with Lance you know he was able to really you know put that Luxley you know and get it out there and very, be a little more specific with that light exactly, um, but also Tim when we did our car trail down Lombard Street in San Francisco it would have been nice to have a boom arm with the Luxley yeah. doing the trail on Lombard Street so but you know yeah. it's like a boom arm is like you don't use it all the time. But when you want, when you you need it, you don't have it, and that way we'll always bring the light stand with us, and you'll now you'll always have that that boom arm too. It's a two for oneer. Nice, right, Gabriel? That looks that looks awesome. Could you send that to me so I could have it instead of you? <laughs> <laughs> um, what I'll say, Tim, is right now it's, it's save ten percent until December fourth with the code BHN pan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, nice, nice. Mark is just asking. He just signed in. Are y'all going to have a, a replay? And as soon as this is over, Mark, it is available on YouTube for you to catch yeah. up where you uh, left off. Yes. Yeah, Ken. The painter's pole for sure is something that's that, and that extends usually even longer. But you got to mm. get the different adapters for it. And again, now you're bringing a painter's pole with you. When I don't know, I I wouldn't well, always think about painters. it. Yeah, and then someone might. You know, tell me to go paint. <laughs> Chris, is this the one that um, that you were working with? Yeah, um, I had this in Maine uh, right when uh, Comet Neowise showed up and got to use it for uh, some photos there. And then, uh, you know, I had this out in Yellowstone with us. Um, and I like this a lot. Um, I've been interested in the tracker for a bit. Uh, but a lot of the ones I've seen are are 
are big, you know, uh, more than I really want to carry. I've got enough gear to carry uh, on a shoot as it is. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Tim, you and I ha had a, a, another brand uh, at Yellowstone too that we couldn't even get set up. You know, I'm sure if we spent more time on it, we would have figured it out. Oh, it was a very yeah, good brand. Uh, the, the point is that uh, the move shoot move is it, it's a smaller, simpler version of a lot of the trackers out there. Uh, now that's said, it's, it's, it's not great for a long lens. You know, they'll tell you flat out that don't use it over like a hundred millimeters. Um, you know, but if you're shooting wide angle, which is what we almost always are doing astral landscape, uh, then this thing, it's just perfect. I mean, it's small. Um, you know, you can see here how small it is compared to the, uh, the camera. I actually think I have it around, uh, uh, but not in my hand. Um, and it's, you know, it's small enough to carry. It's small enough to pack. You can get it in your bag and it doesn't take long to set up. It's got a laser pointer. You can see right on the left there. Uh, that's how you align it with the North star. Um, it, it really just doesn't take a lot of work. Uh, um, you know, and it's effective and it, it, it does, it does what it's supposed to do. Uh, again, within its limitations, it, you know, you can't use a long lens on it, a heavy lens, but uh, we don't usually anyway. Uh, so you stay within those limitations, and this thing is just a, 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 just a fantastic piece of gear. I love it. I just love working with it. So excellent for you feel astro landscape, but not good for using the uh, getting a, a really a close up shot of constellations. Those you still need something big. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. You, you wouldn't use this for deep space uh, photography, and um, you know I'm not betraying them by saying that. They'll tell you that. It's one of the things I like about them. They're very honest about their product. Uh, they'll tell you if you're doing deep space photography, go buy something else. Um, but um, but this allowed me, like with the Comet and with some Milky Way photos, to do, you know, to shoot at like ISO 200, ISO 400, and still get star points um, because it was tracking, you know, it would just track the motion of the stars. Uh, so it's a, it's a lot of fun to work with. Let's see who can talk about the Nan light. I'm using mine right now, Matt. To oh no! <laughs> Maybe? 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 Okay. So I, I held it up before, but this is the Nan light Pavo Tube Two Six C Six Charlie, uh, and it's 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 just dope. It's got uh, all the color temperatures you want. Uh, and there we go. My my camera cuts out very thin. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah, so light it up. Light up yeah. the camera. <laughs> got an internal battery. It's got quarter twenty screws on either end. It's got magnets on these back three sides, so you can stick it onto something metal. Ooh, ooh, stick it to uh, that light stand. Stick it to the light stand over here. Stand, yeah. Yeah. Wait. It's, it's kind of slippery, but here I'll do it up there. Room, is it? there. Doesn't have to be steel. Oh, oh, cool. boom. Steel. Oh, uh, that's yeah. a C stand. So, so yeah, and it's also got the RGB, and it's got all the crazy effects too. So, uh, it charges via USB C, um, and I just find that this is another cool tool. Uh, you guys might have seen that I, I did a video with them where I did a lot of light painting with this. If you haven't seen it, go check it out because uh, I did a lot of light writing and light painting, and I thought it was a fun challenge to do that. And I ended up using a lot of gaff tape to create shapes on it. So. Uh, it is, uh, it's a fun tool and I think it's just another good one to throw into your pack, mm -hmm. uh, to complement cause it's always diffused, right? Um, there are, packed. yeah. And there's also, there's accessories for it. So you can get an egg crate for it, which, you know, some people don't like these tube lights cause they scatter in every direction. Right. So you can get a soft egg crate for this. That's my, my favorite accessory for this mm. well, handles and a waterproof bag and other stuff like that. Cool. I'm yeah. getting that egg crate. Thank you very much. Um, check it out. Steve Barnes is saying he just used the, the move shoot move to win an okay. astro photography contest last hey. month. Yeah, right on, Steve, man. Nice. Right on. Nice. And then Ken said it's only one pound. Nice. Yep. Now that's yeah. the key. So those all the other trackers start at yep. three, three and a half pounds. Yep. You know, and, and and again, they take a, a, a lot more to set up. So right. I think um, it, with the Pavo tube, also there's uh, there's two kits that Nanlite just announced that you can get two of them and a coupler that sticks them together, uh, or one of the holders and and the tubes, and 
there's just two different holiday kits that they have that are nice discounts. Is, is that the Darth Maul kit? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> or the cop car kit. I mean, like, he <laughs> just red blue, red blue, red blue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like this. This is cool, right? Absolutely. You know, I have not gotten uh, many of the things off this site, but again, we were talking about the gifts that we would buy ourselves or uh, for our friends. And this is, um, yeah, I'm going to do some shopping here this for this Christmas. Um, National Park, if you guys are not familiar with the um, uh, with the Instagram account, definitely go follow them, check them out. They're awesome. And um, and just to see all the T-shirts and, and and goodies that they have from national parks like this is just uh, it's amazing. You got to check it out. Do yourself a favor. You're gonna love it. Yeah, I'm a Gator fan, especially riding the motorcycle and the Vespa. The masks mm. are, are are just don't they, they, get, they get all jumbled when the Gators are just perfect sunglasses, and you're like you know the dark, dark rider. Absolutely, you know, especially now that winter time is coming on. Um, these are far more comfortable than the masks are uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to, uh, you know, shooting outside in the winter. Oh, my goodness. Ken just dropped in. We need an end pan neck gator. Hello. Glow in the dark. <laughs> we got to make no. it before someone else does. <laughs> nice. Nice. Wow. So if when you're stuck in quarantine... And, you know, you, you can't go out. And it's, it's just a little bit longer until we get to go outside and play more. You might want something that reminds you of the places that you're not going. So why not get some National Parks themed playing cards? So uh, can I ask, Matt, what, 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 what uh, card games have you been playing? I suck at cards. I don't play 52 pickup. I mean, 52 pickup, that's it. <laughs> All right. Well, whoever, whoever buys these, I'm always game for a good game of... Uh, Cribbage, uh, hearts, you know, Ooh, Jim Robbie, not, whoever, whoever wants to play, you know, at the next workshop, bring 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 their deck of cards. That's Let's go. We'll do this. Yeah, right. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> All joking aside, these are gorgeous. Yeah. They, the, the center of each card is is a different park. There's 52 different parks that they cover. They couldn't get them all in. They'd have to expand the deck. It's not tarot. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh, and our newest calendar. Wait, who's who's is this? Who did this one? All five of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, have we been doing the calendar from the beginning too? I, I think so. Uh, so, um, I think this would be our fifth. What well, this would be our fifth calendar. Yeah, I think we started. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, it would be, yeah. So. Yeah, you know, it's got um, photos of all of us in it. Um, Dave, that's your your shot on the cover. You get the cover this year. I got the cover. I got the cover shot this year. It's just like, you know, guys, buy extras because you want to save this one because it's got the <laughs> cover on it. Yeah, and, uh, Don't open it. Save it. To the next in person conference, and Gabe will sign it for you. <laughs> uh, that's Tim's photo over on the right, um, just outside Sedona. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, there's 14 photos as the cover and then it's a 13 month calendar uh, featuring photos from all five of us, um, mostly from, from national lands. Uh, the, the only one that's not is uh, this gorgeous Aurora photo that Gabe did uh, in, in Norway uh, back in March. Um, but they're all, uh, you know, this year we stuck with all nature photos, so they're all night photos uh, shot in nature. And, and like I said, mostly in National parks, national forests, uh, national monuments. Uh, so uh, there's there's some there's some really nice work in here. And then Thank a couple you, of yes. <laughs> if we do say so ourselves. <laughs> it's a great calendar. It is no, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I just, yeah. but on top of it too, you know, if you're um, our photos aside, there's information in here too. Uh, yeah, if, if you the, the dates of the the meteor shower peaks and new moons and full moons, uh, eclipses. Uh, there's also, you know, like uh, holidays like Astronomy Day, uh, which is a real holiday. It happens twice a year. Uh, National Park Week, International Dark Sky Week. Uh, the dates of all, you know, all that is in here too. So it's, I uh, think, is it all of our birthdays in there too, Chris? Didn't we put that in new this year? <laughs> <laughs> and links to our, our wish list. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
Now, who would want to go on a workshop? That's who wants to go on a workshop. Right? Yeah, I know we would. I hope you like you would too. <laughs> yeah, most of you know what we do, right? For yeah, those of you who are tuning in or don't, we do workshops when it's safe. Yeah, drop in the comments what workshop you're you're looking forward to go to most next year. There yeah. we go. Yes, we'd yeah. love to hear about your friends. It. Your friend will buy you a ticket. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's the workshop. ultimate gift in the gift guide, right? A workshop. Yep. Wow. All right. Ebooks. Uh, here we've got the two ebooks we did this year talking about COVID projects, right? Uh, mm -hmm. These were uh, uh, two publications that we put out at the uh, one in the spring and one in the summer. Uh, great Balls of Fire. It's a great one to buy right now because there's two meteor showers this month uh, that are worth shooting. Yep. Um, and um, you know, that covers everything from how to, how to plan the photo pills to how to shoot it, to how to process it, and then um, all sorts of gear that uh, would make your life easier. Um, and then uh, uh, the other one uh, here, Three Legs to Stand On, that was that was Gabe's uh, idea. Uh, we'll talk about the tripod ebook, book, Gabe. Well, I figured, you know, why, why we, should, we should definitely write an a, a e-book on, you know, definitely not standing on two legs and, and – going to, to, you know, talking about our favorite accessory and must need item. Um, and that is the tripod. And I, th this is, I don't know, it's amazing. It's got over 70 pages, a lot of good information, plus everything you, you know, we, we basically break down, I think over 50 different types of tripods uh, out there and uh, give you what, which ones are our favorites or, but also, Really and, and with really open eyes, really kind of looking, scouring the whole thousands of tripods out there, and really saying this is what you should look for. And because not every tripod is perfect, I can recommend one that's great for me, but it might not fit you. You know, tripods are like shopping for shoes or backpacks. You know, you got to find the one that fits you the best. So we kind of, I think we were very thorough with this, and it's a wonderful, wonderful resource with lots of all, inspirational information as well in there. Yeah, and also Matt wrote a great a great piece for this on uh, sort of best practices. Yeah, choosing a tripod. My tripod sermon, in written yep. form. Yep. Oh, and currently, there's those are um, pay what you feel is right. So, uh, if if you're strapped for cash, the information is there for you at no charge. But if you feel like it's worth something, you can leave a little money. And we do accept crypto. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so it's I guess we don't. Books, uh, you know, we've, you know, we've written um, more than four books uh, between us, uh, but these are the, the, the four that kind of stand out for our audience just in terms of night photography, light painting, and national parks. Um, yeah. I see Shenandoah is trending. Right on, Ed. Yeah. And the, the D seven eighty, right? This is uh, the, the the you know that we obviously the the Z two the Z six two and the Z seven two came out this year, and that, those are very exciting. But I think we're all kind of expecting those, and those were kind of you know a, a nice upgrade. Um, we haven't tested those yet for what they and what those new processors do for the night. But what we can say is the seven eighty is one killer camera this is the perfect bridge between mirrorless and dslr and we know a lot of you really like the feel and the interaction of a dslr and this camera has that feel and that sort of a little bit more of that durability or whatever you know a little bit bulkier to kind of easier to grip but it has all of that the sensor quality touchscreen quality um that you know You'll find it that in that Z6 camera, and uh, it's it's a great it's a great one. You don't have to worry about the adapters for your IRIX or F lenses and stuff with this one. Um, and this has been really exciting. I mean, this sort of this is the replacement of all of us. I think have owned the 750 or leaned on it heavily, and this is the the the, the air apparent of it finally, and it is just as good as advertised. So, well said. And there's a deep dive blog post that Lance wrote about yep. that. Too. 
Cool. So this is, I, I, I put this one in here. Um, you know, we've all been uh, digging on the peak bags uh, a while, but, you know, there are other bags out there. And this has been, I think, the most exciting one that I've seen. And I got to try it out. I will say it's a big backpack. It is very kind of similar to the Peak Travel backpack. It's the same size, that 35 liter. So this is something that you bring a lot of gear in. Um, however, the, the it also expands to 42. The dividers are pretty amazing. And then you can add in this probably the smartest and coolest cube I've ever seen. And you could buy the cube on its own. And that's the 21, uh, the 21 L cube. And that cube basically is fills in the, the sort of the top like this, but then it pulls out and you got a backpack. So it's a cube that turns into this bag, like a day pack. It's mm -hmm. so cool. Um, so I definitely you get both of those together and you got sort of this ultimate, hey, I'll bring everything with me on the trip. But hey, if I just want to go out there with just my one camera and, and you know an, an, a sweater, a sandwich, or whatever, then you've got this lightweight uh, little backpack that you can bring with you. But uh, really excited. Nomadic's been uh, doing everyday bags for a long time. This is their first official camera backpack, and they uh, partnered with Peter McKinnon on this, and he's is he knows a little bit about backpacks and bags in general, and and uh, Super comfy, pack with a lot, really cool bag. Thanks. Looks good. And oh, a little, uh, that I, I, we just changed that because there was a 5% plus R5% that was going on from Optic. The Optic deal ended, so I changed it. It's now 10% off. So you still get the 10% off until Friday, December 4th on this one. Nice. Oh, this, uh, this is, cool. is a fun. Yeah, who suggested this one? Who suggested this one? All right, great. I, I just I just picked my eight and sent it to my family that I want. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you know, they have a couple hundred. I know. I, I just you know exactly. They had, there were okay. so many to choose from. So many to choose from. I, I think that your uh, your vest. Uh, you, you, I think your end pan shirt is going to be covered with pins like Matt's covered with patches. <laughs> I'm going to start with a sash. I'm a sash guy. I mean, it's, uh, it's like, <laughs> end up being heavier, though. <laughs> I'll end up being um, heavier. You, you definitely have to go check out this website and see, you know, uh, for the for the for the gift guide PDF. Uh, we just had to pick a small sampling of them, but this gives you a good sense of of what's on there. There's some really cool pins, uh, a lot of fun stuff that they thought of, um, and like I said, this is a couple hundred. Um, it's yeah. it's really a nice variety and. If you're just looking for, you know, something simple to give somebody, uh, this would be great. You know, these can pin on your, uh, on the strap of your bag or, on, you know, your jacket or if you wear a photo vest or, or anything. And another thing, like one thing that's always bugged me about pins is how easy they can fall off and, and you don't know. They also sell these locking uh, pin backs. Um, so uh, it, it's, yeah. I'm tempted to pick up just some of those too, because yeah. I never wear my pins because I'm always afraid of them falling off. Yes, so. yes. Uh, but definitely go check these out. Check out their website. It's a lot of fun. Flare. Yeah, so Palette. I've been using Palette for uh, a few years now, and I really just like how intuitive the controls are. Um, you know, it's kind of like operating an audio board, but for post-processing. Uh, and they've got the, the monogram consoles out now, which are... Uh, <laughs> there we go. Matt's got his right there. Uh, and the monogram ones are like, you know, a, a sleek design. Um, they're new in 2020. Uh, so, so they're worth checking out too. But that's a really cool product. I've, I've been in love with these since they first came out. You know, this is one of those products that as soon as I saw it for the first time, I, I knew I was going to love using it. And I could see, uh, you know, the role that it would play in, um, in the work that I do. So. Yes, you know what different. I use it the most for lately? And this is, there's a whole bunch of options there, but just the push buttons. When I'm doing my first breeze through of images to pick something with a flag or unpick it, I have one mm. button for pick and one for unpick or unflag. Mm. Like, yeah. And that's it. I'm just like, I flip through them like bang, 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 bang. And it, it makes it so much faster because those keys on my keyboard are so far apart. 
Mm -hmm. This is the fastest way to do it. So sweet, sweet. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, so I dig. I dig what they do. Oh, these are cool. <laughs> Aren't they just? Aren't they awesome? This 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 whole website is cool. The Parks Project website. I whoever put chose this one. I I, I definitely got lost for forty five minutes on their website. <laughs> um, and 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 yeah, the pennants I think are some of the coolest. But they have great T shirts and all sorts of other sort of uh, fun pro park stuff. You know, and that's the thing too. Buying from a from a company like this that you know promotes and protects you know lands. It's just like ah. Oh. Yes, thank you. This is good. <laughs> this is what we. This is what we want in a company, you know. So, yeah, and I agree, I agree with you, Gabriel, completely. When I missed picking up a patch at a park, I would go to their website and get it. Oh, oh from Parks Project, yeah, 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 yeah. Like oh, cool. the fire, the Fire Island patch. The every every time that the uh, we were near, it's the, closed. Uh, right. Yeah, it was just closed. Yeah. So, so that's what I had to do. I had to go. I had to go buy it off the off the interwebs. So, so Matt and Sandra, my question to you: When you go to a location more than like four times, don't you think you deserve a pennant? No, <laughs> no, because then I'd have to get a cloak and put all the pennants on the cloak. Well, you know what would be cool, Matt? You, you you've got the property to do this, but we could make a big pole, right? A flagpole, and then just kind of hang. You could hang like, it fifty like the and bird flag. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like. Like the Eddie Adams flag, you know? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. Sandra's down. Uh, I'll let Sandra take that one up. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Oh, photo pills. Never used it. it. Never used it. <laughs> no, we you know, I was, you know, I'm wondering, has this made our list every year? It's got to have, right? Yeah, I mean, all right. Our if there is anyone in this room that doesn't have who who doesn't have photo pills in this room, raise your hand. Don't admit it. No, you should admit it. Is anyone here does? Well, say, it takes it. thirty right. seconds for them to get what we said, so let's come back to it. <laughs> okay, we'll come back to that. But we we love well, this I got app. Two awesome. things to, I've got two things to say about this app. Number one, as I've said from the beginning, it is the best nine ninety nine you'll ever spend. I mean, uh, do we agree yeah, on that? Once. Yeah, and just once. Right. Yeah, just once. I did have a good yeah. ice cream once for nine ninety nine. <laughs> oh, and then the <laughs> other thing is that I noticed that um, a lot of people take that um, take that to heart and they 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 buy the app. I'm always surprised at how many people have the app, but don't really know how to use it. And um, well, it's a heady app, Chris I will say. It's a heavy app, you know, and, you know, you could do some really simple things very easily without delving too deep um, into the app, uh, which we do all the time. Hey, where's the Milky Way going to be tonight? At what time? You know, where's the sun coming up? What time is the sun coming up? But there's so much more to it. Um, and uh, yeah, and Chris has got a, a solution for that. Didn't you come up with a solution, Chris? Um, Nicholson. Yeah. yeah, next year we're doing two... Uh, <laughs> Two workshops dedicated to learning photo pills. We're doing one in Joshua Tree and one in Acadia. Uh, you know, two great and very different national parks, and they're they're oh perfect for doing this. You know, so we're gonna be in the classroom during the day, uh, learning how to use a feature, and then going out and scouting in daylight, and then executing those shots at night. Um, but uh, yeah, I agree. It's you know, it's not the easiest app to learn because you know, but this is normal. It's like the more powerful an app is, the harder it is to learn. Uh, there's, there's just a learning curve, but it is so worth it uh, to invest the time in learning how to use this because it'll change your photography. It'll just, it'll literally change the kind of photos that you can do. Yep. I, tell you, I, I just used this app the other day. I knew I had to go, uh, go to, to a certain area in uh, Pittsburgh to pick up some beer. And I want to, I use Google Maps to scout it out. And I saw, oh, I'm going to pass this bridge. And I love documenting bridges. And Pittsburgh's got plenty of them. So then I opened it up in photo pills. And I knew what time I was going to be there. And I saw, I used it, they used the planner to just see, because I saw there's two sides, obviously, the bridge I could get down on. 
but I wanted to get on the right side where the sun was making sure that the sun was hitting the bridge and getting that beautiful side light from the sun. And I was like, boom, done. And now I know where to go exactly for this, God forbid, daytime shot. Oh, you know, <laughs> I'm hanging up. For something ancillary. Uh, I'll camp sometimes when I'm on a park trip. And one thing I don't like about camping is the sun hitting the tent in the morning, especially if I'm out shooting <laughs> right night. Right. To to figure out where the shade was going to be. And I set up my tent there. That's hilarious. That Love is it. hilarious. That's the next, that's the next pill, the shade pill. <laughs> oh, this, this is one that's near and dear to my heart. Um, I was looking for it in my bag. I don't know where I put it. Uh, <laughs> that's bad. Anyway, um, as an aficionado and uh, having a love-hate relationship with intervalometers, this is the best one that I've found so far to date. Uh, the Fotix Aeon. Uh, is a wireless or wired intervalometer. You can use just the handheld piece and wire it directly to your camera, or you can use a receiver. Uh, one of the big deals that it has is it goes to the tenth of a stop. And of course that happens. And it, can, can it turn and, your camera back on? Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can do it to wake your camera back up. That's why I was gonna use it. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so yeah. Um, and in the age of NPF, uh, mm -hmm. calculating NPF exposure times, where you want to maximize, you know, like maybe those six tenths of a second are going to get you a little bit more light. Yeah. Why not? So, Smart. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And it works. It works really well. So there's, a, there's that. Down. I'm down. I Ooh, love man. Steve Bar. Steve, Steve's on fire tonight, by the way. Look yeah. So there's a beer run function to photo pills now. And yep. It's like the cat's <laughs> out of the beer's out of the bag, so to speak. Nice. Yes. I mean, I'm in, I'm in talks with Raphael about uh, adding the uh, beer finder uh, pill to <laughs> to it as well. Yeah. Hey Matt, I've got a I've got a question for you. Um, yes. Is there any indication, uh, or maybe you've not used it this far away, but on the Photix, um, is there any indication to you that the shutter has actually fired? If you say you're a hundred feet away, yeah, it has. Than... Um, it has the feedback on it. I wish I had to show you guys. Um, I am 99% sure that it has two-way communication like, gotcha. like Pocket Wizards did. So yep. uh, that when you press, it has a green and a, a red light on the transmitter receiver, the transceiver mm -hmm. really. So yep. um, yeah, you'll know if it's open. Cool. Um, yeah. And if you're using the bulb function, you tap it and it does the count up right there on the transmitter, the wireless mm -hmm. one. So, yep. Are we cool. halfway through yet? We're in, we're in the R's. We got to be over halfway. <laughs> Rumble. These are cool. Oh, I picked this one. I I wrote about them. I forget who picked them. <laughs> Wait, did you I write got, about? You got rumpled. Yes, I got rumpled. Um, I I I like these. After I looked at them, I, was, I said it was a great idea. Number one, there's a couple of things that you might not pick out until you look closely. Like it has hooks at the corners so you can stake it down oh cool, oh, cool. right and they are padded they're quilted but they're quilted in a nice sort of like um topographic map pattern and they're printed with scenes from your favorite parks you know um nice. at the at the time that we put this out there were more available and then black friday happened so they they sold out a bunch wow. um, good for yeah you. so uh but so get them while they're hot uh so you can stay warm uh, but these are these are really beautifully done blankets. Yeah, they do have. Um, uh, you, you can sign up for an email notification for when they get them back in stock too. So yeah, if nice. uh, you're really hot and get one of them for somebody, and uh, yeah. make sure you uh, send them the email address. How many email addresses did you give them, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> one for each. Uh, speaking so, of being hot or warm, wait, did everyone get this coat, but Chris? Right, I got mine. <laughs> yeah, they said, "Hey, you put this in your gift guide. We'll each give you guys. We can we can give you four coats." Four, and I didn't. Know. Oh, I got left out. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So wow. you know, if you if you know somebody who likes shooting in cold weather and you want to get them something super nice, uh, the Frank Hurley photographer's jacket. Um, uh, this is from uh, Shackleton, uh, which you know they've got a reputation for. 
high-end products, right? And uh, this definitely fits in. If you're not familiar with Frank Hurley, he's the uh, photographer who accompanied the um, Imperial Transatlantic Expedition of Antarctica, which was the first attempted land crossing of Antarctica. Um, and, you know, they were smart. They brought a photographer with them, and that was Frank. Uh, so this jacket is aptly named for the photographer who uh, likes being, or at least wants to be out shooting in cold weather. Um, you know, I, I love shooting in the snow. I don't like the cold, uh, but I love shooting snow scenes and, um, you know, night snow scenes in particular. And really the, the way to do it is to be warm. Uh, you know, it sounds so simple, but it's not that bad if you're wearing the right gear. Uh, and, you know, this is a beautiful jacket. It's, it's, it's waterproof and it's uh, down insulated. And um, it's uh, with the photographer in mind, it's got a ton of pockets, including uh, pockets that are uh, the si size for SD cards uh, to make easy access uh, to change cards if you need to. Um, so this is a this is a high end item, but uh, it's it's a really nice piece. Chris, if it's One, really two, a Frank Hurley coat, it, it it should have a pocket that can you can fit a glass plate. Glass plate. <laughs> <laughs> eight oh. by ten glass plate in. <laughs> I don't know. I think those front. I think those front flat pockets will fit they, a four they, by possibly. five. Possibly, yeah, possibly. <laughs> I think you listen. If you're signed up for the Lafouten workshop, save up your pennies and bring this coat with. <laughs> You'll need it. Oh, I got distracted. There we go. Oh, oh look at that. Oh, Boom. look at that. Oh, we got a double Whoa. vision here. Double vision. Syrup genie. Times Syrup genie. Two. So this is the pan tilt version where you actually get uh, not one, but two Syrup Genie Mini 2s at the same time. Uh, oh. And in the app, you can connect both of them at the same time. And you can end up controlling them from this app where you hit create content and you go in here and usually you go into keyframe and let's say you do like night traffic, right? Now from here, I can control where I want it to start wirelessly Look and set that. the start and then move to on this where it wants to go. Uh, it's a really, really uh, insanely intuitive to use piece of gear if you want to create time lapses that have motion to them and the the genius thing about this is that you can do not just one axis but two at the same time so um that's that's the big deal here is that you can you can create keyframes also so it's not just like turn to the left and tilt up you can tilt up and then back down and go back and forth and that's just the tip of the iceberg there's a bunch of things you can do with this uh, that are meaningful and i just got this i had been lusting after it for a while and i'm just leaning into using it and so far just after a week of playing with it i'm super enthusiastic about what i can do with it to create time lapses yeah mm. did you have the one unit before matt i did i had a yeah. single before yeah right so now you can out right and that and that's good right that's so simple and easy and it's a great way to get some movement the pan movement into your time lapses but right. this just opens up yeah. so many doors here. Yep. Yeah, this, this is the single unit right here. And all you do is put this underneath your tripod head. Yeah. Or put it on top of your tripod head, wherever you think is the best place, right? <laughs> uh, and then and then this this will turn your camera. And it does move, move shoot, move, right? It'll yeah. move it, take a picture, and then move it again and take a picture, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. This nice. just comes with those two units plus this angle arm that's spaced perfectly to put your camera on center. So yeah. it's genius. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, I've got a couple of comments, Matt. What tripod are you using for that pan and tilt unit, I guess, in uh, this? Oh, geez. I knew they were going to ask that. Um, this this is a, a discontinued Enduro uh, LFB 75. But I think Benro has made a version of this. It's, just, it's called a, a low boy in the, the, the video. Exactly. Yeah. In the video industry, this is a low boy or a, low, a high hat, a high hat, a high hat because it's um it's got a bowl on the bottom of it, and I just wanted to show you guys this. So, it's got a half bowl on the bottom where you can level out what you're doing, but be really close to the ground. Yeah. Uh, so, I did carry this with me a lot on shoots for a while as my second tripod, 
because it's really good to do um, BTS stuff. And then just put this down low and have it angled up high. But it is kind of heavy because it's made of all aluminum and it's got that thick spider in the middle. So, yeah. Uh, Mar Martha is also commenting. I can tell this video is going to cost me some big bucks. Obviously, Sorry, she's, getting, she's getting two of those uh, Shackleton coats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we got to move on, though. Got to move on. Peter ah, this, is my, this is my new favorite bag. Uh, I've been yeah. using this since uh, 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 since our Norway trip, Gabe. Uh, since, yeah, that's uh, right. Um, you know, I, I I've been using a backpack for years to carry my cameras because uh, I I liked how you know just how convenient it was to be able to throw my stuff in my back. You know, I would bring it on the plane and then I could bring it into the you know if I'm hiking or whatever. Um, but I'm almost fifty, and it just seemed like every trip I made my back and my neck hurt by the end of it um and i started to be jealous of people who had rollers and um you know but i still liked having the backpack option and this was perfect matt told me about this bag it was last winter I, uh, matt i asked you know i told you basically what i just said and uh, you thought i should look into this bag and it was just absolutely perfect for me um i usually use it as the roller um, yeah. And I've got it right back here. I'd pick it up and show it to you, except it's full of gear. It's got, you know, um, I've got two D5s in there and I want to say six lenses. I mean, it holds more than I need for a trip. Um, but it's so easy to roll behind me. And then if I, uh, you know, let, let me grab it because this is the important part. I'll also say that I ordered this for the Lofoten trip as well, but mine came the day after yeah, I left. Here's the, but here's the best part. If I do want to hike, I can just take this out. You know, I can take the straps out um, and then put it on my back and, and I'm ready to go on a trail. So um, it's, it's great. It's a, just a great dual purpose bag. This has really changed how I feel at the end of the trip, um, which, which is important. Uh, I love this bag. Absolutely. Yep. Great, great roller. Smooth and durable. Smooth. And through December 4th, there's another 10% off on that, right? 10% off, yep. Good work, Gabe. This, I got this, and this has been super fun. Um, I've been using this, you know what? I've been using this to plug in uh, my webcam from uh, as, as well. Um, you know, or again, this is a great one if you're going camping and, you know, you're going to be camping for a couple of days and not near, but be not near any uh, outlets or the possibility of them. Yeah. Sometimes we could turn on our car and stuff like that, but this brick, and this is a super slick solid, but it has got some weight to it brick because it, it, it does have uh what is it? 26,800 milliamps of juice in there. Um, and it has the USB-C connection, so you can power up any la laptop twice, um, or again, the USB or USB-C connection. So you can also power up your batteries and other stuff like that that has uh, any of that uh, connection. You can also use this as the, your new key case relay um, battery. You know, a lot of you, you have the rock solid ones, and that's good. That'll last, you know, three, five, six hours. This will definitely last you for a very long time lapse, a two day time lapse, you know? So really cool uh, battery pack to keep you powered everywhere you go. Uh, Tim, I love this photograph, by the way. Oh, thanks, man. I, I, I'm not interested in your tutorials, but what, what, what about that brick? <laughs> <laughs> that was, um, that was, as you know, I, I go to Glacier every every summer. You know, I've been going there for 25 oh, that years. Was that, um, yeah, that was a fire. Yeah, yeah. sunrise at you know uh, through the fires. But um, yeah, I think these uh, these are um, uh, these videos, especially the Lightroom video, is so is so crucial for for people. You know, uh, we always see it on the workshops, right? You guys, people are kind of have a vague idea of what they're doing with. Um, <clears throat> you know, moving the sliders around in Lightroom and things like that. Um, but in here, uh, this particular video, I uh, really talk a lot about exactly why and what to look for in photographs as you're developing and what the sliders actually do. 
um, and uh, gives you, you know, being able to craft uh, a way to move these sliders in, in, in a process that's going to really bring out your vision and your photographs. Um, and likewise, the other uh, videos that I have on, on my site are really geared uh, perfectly for photographers. So whether it's composition or um, exposure or even flash, um, there's a lot of daytime uh, tutorials there as well uh, and videos that uh, are not just for the night photographer, but, uh, but you know, as night photographers, we all get our start in a day. And you've, if you don't understand daytime photography, you're gonna have a hard time with nighttime photography. So um, yeah, yeah, I think they're, uh, I've put a lot of time into them. I think they're good pieces of work for folks. Thanks yeah. for making those, Tim. Yeah. Uh, this is a fun one I came across uh, uh, months ago. Uh, this is just a really funky chart. Uh, you know, they That's cool. produce it in five waves, uh, and it's a month by month start of astronomical events for 2021. So it's kind of an astronomy calendar. Uh, but because of the way they lay it out, you can really see sort of uh, why eclipses happen and why uh, planet oppositions happen. Um, and, and it's just a fun, this is fun decor, uh, but also has information in it at the same time. You, you ride the wave. I want that too. Yeah, it's cool. That's I awesome. Like it. Scotties. Uh, I don't know who wrote about Lance. these. But I tell you, out of all the out of all the gloves that I've used, these these mittens are to me just superior for warmth. Yeah, yeah, I love them. Match ma match them with a little hand warmer. I mean, that's the key. I mean, we listen. There's just like there's no perfect tripod. There's no perfect this this that. You know, the gloves can be just such a, a struggle to find, um, but. I think these are a good solution. I, I don't have these, but I'm, I'm definitely curious about these. But at whatever glove you have, they often have that zipper for that heat warmer, and that's going to take it to the next level. So matching yeah. that with that with that that heat warmer just kind of that'll keep you comfortable and shooting, you know, long into those wonderful cold winter nights. <laughs> I can vouch for this stool. Yes, right. That's such a cool stool, right? I love this stool. Yeah, this the. I think I hurt my knee at one point, and I brought it with me at a great sand dunes also, because uh, I didn't want to sit in the sand with all the insects that live in the sand. Um, I this is, it's not like bringing an extra tripod. It's very light. It might have a little bit of bulk to it, but it's not a lot, uh, and it comes with its own slipcase. Um, this portable three-legged stool. Uh, is great for people who really just want to sit down without sitting down on the ground. Yep. Yep. Chill out during those two plus hours uh, star trails. I remember, I think it was like Stacy and Juan were like at a workshop and then we're all standing up and then all of a sudden they whip out some stools and I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I'll sit down too. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember the first time I saw that on a workshop. I was like, ugh. Oh, smart. <laughs> Those, that's an experienced night photographer right there. <laughs> In fact, you don't have to extend the legs. You can just use it where all the, the legs join together, too, to have a shorter stool. Oh. Yep. Well. Cool. Yep. Who found yeah, these? So this, uh, so this um, the thing I love about this is you can get them customized with the dates on them. Uh, so if you're just into collecting mementos of places you've been, um, you, know, you know, some people like doing stamps, Gabe, uh, and, you know, Matt's got his great pack, patch collection. Um, but this is cool. You know, you can just go on and, and say you've been in 20 parks and uh, get the date stamped right on them. And, um, like, I like this necklace, but you could also get them on a keychain, um, or you can put them on your own thing. But, again, just another fun little national park related item. We could we could become the meisters of uh, or maesters of national parks like in Game of Thrones, right? <laughs> That's awesome. I love this. That is it. Do they come in a like in a ten pound version as well? Nice, nice. I like those. That's it. That's it. My gosh. Well, well, thank you. Thanks, guys. That was. Uh, 
right? I think uh, we've got some comments already that saying that uh, we've helped guide them to helping. Uh, that was my favorite. Uh, exactly. Wow. Wow. So, so, you know, right. Obviously, you know, the holidays, it's a time for giving um, and guiding people, you know, because who wants another, um, what is it, fruitcake? <laughs> or what have you? Yeah. I like panettone, but you know, if you warm it up, it's it's a, it's a little bit more acceptable. But um, you know, we, we really hope that we you know we try to think of you guys year round, like Chris said at the beginning. And we're always kind of looking, being on the lookout for for these cool gifts that will not only help us, you know, focus and take better pictures, but also just enhance the overall park night photography experience so um feel free to drop a line in uh you know comment on the blog reach out to us what gifts that you liked this year what gifts you're requesting this year and again if you guys find something um that's really cool i think martha you got to give me more than an hour notice before the gift guides going live you know on, <laughs> on saturday it's just like oh look at i found a cool gift and i'm like okay that one's not gonna make the cut <laughs> But if you do see stuff tool that's really cool and you think we might be uh, interested in it or uh, might make the gift guide, feel free to share it with us throughout the year. We'd love right. to hear from yeah, you. Yeah, you know, I think of so many things that, uh, you know, our students have taught us throughout the years, you know, whether it's bits of gear or techniques or whatever. And so it's valuable and we mean it for sure. Yep. When we say that. Awesome. Wow. Well, thanks for being here on the marathon, guys. <laughs> yeah, this is like, woo, fruitcake's on us. <laughs> and uh, so uh, uh again thank you and tomorrow if you guys you're interested join us on instagram live i'll be there with larry the owner of bay photo and we'll get into the nitty-gritty of printing look at a lot of their different services they offer and mm. also we'll be promoting that promo code so um you know definitely take advantage of uh of printing because to be honest with you the best gift that probably anyone can receive from you this year is probably a print. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, check the blog in the upcoming weeks too. We got some. Uh, uh, we're gonna have a little bit of a surprise announcement. A little ooh, hint. Ooh, ooh, uh, ooh, 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 ooh. Got a on a blog post about. Um, uh, Gabe, do you want to tip that one off? Wait, we're all going to Monhegan and Acadia. No. <laughs> 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 we're going to have um, uh, our favorite photos of, uh, of 2020. Here, so. yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, definitely keep your eye out on the blog the next few weeks as we uh, wrap up 2020. We're, we're, we're <laughs> finishing in a flourish, so to speak. Oh, yeah, thank you guys again, we love, we love you guys. We love yeah. the community, this online, all the mm -hmm. online love, you know, and a great way to hang out with you. So really wonderful Absolutely. to see you all. Thank yeah, you thanks so for much. Us. Do us a favor. Um, if you haven't already, hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed and you're just seeing us for the first time and you liked this, please subscribe for new, fresh content practically every week. Uh, and thank you. We'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Peace.